Now let's take this example. I have fetched an object from the database and I have used this to say uh, render some um, a page or screen to the user. Now the user is going to look at the screen and then react to it and enter some inputs. Now what I need to do is I need to take the user inputs and then update the you know the record back to the database. It's a it's a very common scenario. It happens most of the times. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the data, displaying it to the user, and then updating the data with the user inputs and sending it back. Now the problem with this scenario is that there is going to be a think time when it comes to the user. Now when I render this. Um, you know the display to the user the user is going to take some time it might be five seconds it might be 10 seconds it might even be a minute now the problem here is that i will have to wait for that duration here and i don't know how long i need to wait and then i need to make an update so i i it's not a good idea to have all of these inside a single transaction so what i'll do is i'll have once one transaction I'll open a session where I open a transaction and get the data here. I'll close the transaction, close the session. And then I will uh, let the user take his or her time when it comes to making the input. And then once I get the user's input, I'm going to make I'm going to open another session where I'm going to do the update. Now the problem is that once I've got this uh, once I've got the entity object here, it is persistent. Now I cannot wait. I need to close the session here. The moment I close the session, it's going to be detached. And now I wait for the user input here. Now the user makes an input. Now I have the update here. I have the updated value. And now I need to save it back to the session, which means that I need to have this object back to a persist persistent state again. Now, how do I move an object from the detached state to a persistent state? Now, once I do that, you know, once I make this object back to a persistent state, the user input, uh, you know, updation is as simple as setting the properties of this object, of the persistent object. But now, how do I move it from detached to persistent? So that's something that we're going to look at now. Okay, you can see here I'm doing a session dot get of the user object with the primary key of one. Now this is the first first part of the process. Now I have an object that I'm getting from the database, and once I got, I've got the object, I'm closing the transaction and I'm closing the session. Now I have displayed this object related uh, information to the user, and I'm waiting for the user input now. Now I cannot open the transaction for long. I'll close this now. I can wait for the user input as long as I want. Now, this probably will be another method with a handle to this uh, to this method to this uh, object. So I'll let me place this inside an object. Okay. So what I what I'll do is now I have this user object which I'm going to use to you know render the view to the user and uh, I'll wait for the user input and then there'll be another method or another uh, class which will run to update this user object once we get the input from the you know from the user now there has to be a way in which I can you know make this user object become persistent once again so what I'll do is let me let me open a new session here Okay. Again, this code will probably be in a different method or in a different class, but uh, for simplicity, I'm going to put this in the same uh, class. And the idea is to see how we can attach the user object back to the session with a by opening a new session. So what I'll do here is I'll again do a session dot begin transaction. Now I will uh, I will have the updated value here. So probably what I'll do is user dot set username now i'll set the username as updated username after session close okay since i'm updating this after the session close it's not going to get updated in the database now i'll have to somehow find a way to update this user in the database i'll call the session dot update now the session dot update takes an object as argument. I will pass the user object here. So what I'm telling Hibernate is to update this user by finding out which record it is that needs to be updated. Now I'm not going to give 
uh, more details, all the information is already available in the user object. It knows what's the primary key. The primary key has not changed here. As you can see, I'm using the same object. So as long as I have a handle to the object, even though it's in a detached state, I can again merge it back to a persistent state. So once I do this, it's going to update. It's going to send out an update query and then it's going to update the corresponding record in the database and the value will be the updated username after session close. So let's test this out. I will close this transaction as well, the second transaction, and I'll come at the transaction and I'll close this. Now let's have a look at what is the value. Now, of course, I will change the hpm2ddl.auto to update because I don't want this to go away. I have already have a user with ID one. Okay, so now let's run this. So here you can see it does a select and it does an update. Now the select is for the get. We got this object from the, in the, from the first session and we close the session and then now I change this property and now I'm doing an update and uh, this update is triggering the update query. So now if you can look at the data record, here you can see that the change that I've made after the close of the first session has been reflected in the database. In the second session, Hibernate has figured out what is the row that corresponds to this user even though it's removed from the session and then it automatically attaches back to the session. Now there the are a couple of things to note here. The first thing is that if I make any changes to the user object here, uh, you know, after I do an update, it is automatically going to persist it. So I can do a user dot set username and I can say change after update. This will be updated as well. So it's not going to run more than one update query because it knows that only one is required. So here you can see it updates that as well. So what it's actually doing is not only it is updating the value, it is also making this uh, the user object as a persistent object. So whatever changes you make here will be persistent. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing to note here is that Let's say I do not make any changes to the user object. I'm just getting the object here and I'm detaching it. And then in the second session, I am attaching it. I'm doing an update and attaching it back to the back to the session, the second session. Now, if I run this, notice what happens. Now, even though I have not made any changes to the user object, it is going to run the update query. It's going to do a update user details. Now, why is it doing that? The reason it's doing that is Hibernate does not know if anything has changed in the user object. Now, as long as the user object is in the session, as long as the user object is persistent, Hibernate keeps track of changes. Okay, you make an, a change in a property, Hibernate knows, okay, this has to be updated. It marks this uh, property as dirty and it knows that an update query has to be triggered. But now, since this object is coming from another session, Hibernate does not know what is the value that's saved in the database. So unless uh, it does an update, it cannot be sure that the value, the current value of the user gets reflected to the record in the table. So, you know, to be on the safer side, Hibernate does the update query so that any further changes you make can also be uh, persisted and there is no data inconsistencies. There is a way to avoid this though. Say you want to make sure uh, the object has changed before doing an update. So what you do is you ask Hibernate to first do a select and see if the um, the user object that you're trying to uh, trying to update is any different from what's already there in the table. Now you will tell Hibernate, you can tell Hibernate to make an update query, to fire an update query only if something has changed in the user object. And if nothing has changed in the user object, don't run any update queries, just attach this back, you know, make this back to a persistent state. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to go to the entity um, entity class itself and you have to have an entity annotation. Now this annotation is specific to Hibernate. It's not uh, a Java, you know, JP annotation. So we need to use the Hibernate and entity annotation in order to specify this. So the way I do this is Below the, you know, the Java X dot persistence dot entity annotation, I also use the Hibernate 
entity annotation. So that is org dot hibernate dot annotations dot entity. So I need to give the fully qualified uh, name because I already have an entity annotation here. So this entity annotation of hibernate has a property called select before update and this you can set it to true. Now what am I doing by setting this to true? I'm saying hey hibernate make sure you do a select first before you do any updates and uh, make update queries only if there is something that needs to be updated. So this is applicable for uh, the whole uh, entity. It's not just the uh, dot update. So we're going to look at a couple of other uh, scenarios where this is applicable. But for now, uh, when you do a session dot update of any entity, not only does it attach itself to the you know the persistent state, it also in, instead of instead of firing an update query directly, what it does is it just does a select first, and if the select comes up with a different set of uh, data in the table, which is different from what is there in this user object right now, then it also fires an update query. But if it is the same, it does not fire the update query. So let's test that out one more time. Now, again, I'm not making any changes to the, to the user object here. So now when I run this, here you can see there are two selects that are happening. So the first select is for this session.get. I'm getting the user object and I'm saving it into this user details object. Now I'm doing the session dot close. Now in the new session, I'm doing a session dot update. Normally what would happen is it would just, uh, to be on the safe side, it would just fire an update query. But now since I've done a select before update, what it does is it, it executes another select and it gets the current state of the data in the table. Now it figures out that this, you know, the state is the same. I haven't made any changes here, so it is not going to fire the update query. But however, if I make a change here, set username, let me change the name here. Now what will happen is Hibernate will, um, before doing an update, it runs a select and then it figures out that something has changed and then it runs another update query. So let's test that out. So here you see the first select is to get the object and now in the second session when i do a you know user dot session dot update of user it first does a select sees that okay something has changed now it's going to update the data in the you know in the database now the select before update is uh, is useful if most of the times you wouldn't change anything you just want to attach uh, the you know the object back to the session, but if there is a chance that the uh, you know the object might have been changed, if it's a good chance, then it's better not to do a select dot uh, you know select before update because it's going to run another select query and then after that it's going to run an update query on top of that. So you can save an update query if you know that the session I mean if the object might not be changed, but if there is a chance if there is a good chance that the object might be changed, it's a good idea to not do a select before update.